There's a lot of stuff going on. This is an important uh, discussion we're going to have. All right, good. So let's start with the debate. Come on, yes. come on. I want to hear your I want to hear your opinions. What happened right. in the so last two days? You've got two things going on. You've got the um, people at home watching, and then you have the corrupt media that's telling you what's happening, but they're not really telling you the truth. So just keep that in mind. There are two tracks. So you've got the uh, 20 Democrats, four or five of them are now in play. The other 15 are eliminated. The ones that are still in play are um, Joe Biden, Mm -hmm. Mayor Pete, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Senator Harris, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and Senator Warren. Bernie Sanders is in the pack, but he's cooked. I think so too. He's through. He's not. He does okay. not look like a serious consideration. No, he isn't. He yeah. isn't a serious player now. Yeah, he'll stay. He's got nothing else to do. Remember, Bernie and Sanders his people are been loyal. in the Senate for decades. Yeah, and passed one bill, mm-hmm. a renaming of the post office in his state. That's it. Never did anything in the Senate. Um, so he's he's done. So you get those four. Mm-hmm. You got those four people. But Biden is still the guy who the money Democrats are going to go for, even though the media does not like him. But last night, Kamala Harris put herself in the number two spot. I agree. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be Biden-Harris. Mm-hmm. OK, and um, they're going to have to make friends, but they will. It'll be a little drama. But that's, I think, going to be the ticket. Biden-Harris. Yes. I think there's a chance that uh, Harris, if she continues to perform as well as she did last night, and Biden, Biden was okay in the first half hour, but when she came directly after him, he was, he looked like a deer in the headlights. And he, he was positioned as, your time has passed. Uh, well, I disagree with the deer in the headlights because deers, deer can jump and, and Joe can't. I mean, he's not getting <laughs> yeah, over the Okay, head. you're right. You're um, right. You're right. Yeah. So maybe uh, a turtle in the, in the headlights. <laughs> right. Joe, Joe is just discombobulated. He had to know Harris was going to do that. It Harris wasn't ready. He's been around a country for the last three weeks. So, doing Stu, that. hang on just a second. Stu, yeah. how, I'm Kamala Harris, and I say to you, and I was that little girl on that bus. Shame on you. Look, how I, do you answer? I you know, was in the Senate for a long time. I can go through all the things that I led. But, you know, what I opposed was not busing. What I opposed was that specific policy and the way it was implemented. And you know who else opposed it? Were the voters of my state who were black. Black voters in Delaware opposed that busing bill. So you can go back and do revisionist history all you want. And that's what, of course, Harris was trying to do there. Right. And she did it effectively. Because he, but he was not prepared for it. How was he not prepared for that, Bill? No, but you guys are missing the big point. Harris wasn't trying to revise history. Harris doesn't know history. <laughs> right? Yes. She doesn't, she says nothing to revise. She doesn't know it. What she's trying to do is what all the left-wing politicians do, identity politics. Mm -hmm. And she was trying to shame Biden Mm -hmm. because Kamala Harris, as we all know, is very virtuous. Mm -hmm. Virtuous. Mm -hmm. They're going to run on the virtuous ticket. Okay, it's like we Democrats are very humane. We don't want to see anybody suffer. One of my favorite Harris lines last night was – we, we have to figure out how to put food on your table. Yeah, we don't want a food You know fight. what, lady? Yeah. I'll put food on my own table. Mm-hmm. I don't want you coming, unless you're delivering a pizza or something to me. I don't want you putting food on my table. But this is the theme, that these virtuous Mother Teresa-type politicians, all right, or St. Francis of Assisi if you're a male, all right, these virtuous oh politicians gosh. are going to Make everything all right. Mm. Everything that you need, you, the American citizen, everything. All right? You need your uh, driveway shovel in the winter? Hey, don't worry about it. We're going to come and get it. And even if you're homeless, we'll shovel any driveway you want. 
Just point to one. Okay. So, you, just, you know, you're, so... <laughs> you're talking about Mother Teresa, and a lot of people might think that you're, uh, you know, you're, you're being hyperbolic about this, but may I just play, may I just play Marianne Williamson's harnessing of love clip? Listen to this. Yes. I'm going to harness love <laughs> for political purposes. I will meet you on that field, and, sir, love will win. Thank you. You know what? <laughs> I thought Tony Tennille was running. Love will keep us together. Remember that? <laughs> yeah, Love I do. I, keep us I do. And I about three the others. Captain too. and Tennille were up there. Right. <laughs> Mayor Pete was the captain. Right. And, uh, <laughs> was, uh... I have to tell you, that was yes. bizarre. It was like an alien landed. Oh, no, that wasn't bizarre. No, it wasn't. Next, they're going to have a fortune teller. Okay? <laughs> yeah, a little gypsy woman. Oh, my gosh. Why does a fortune teller have to be a gypsy? Oh, my gosh. Um, because gypsies are, are uh, very talented in that area. Yeah. What's the matter with you? What? I okay. mean. So, but let's get back to the serious theme. If Americans buy this, all right, then we are a Toast. country in crisis. So that's, that's what I mean when I say in the, my beginning remarks, there's, there's two prongs here. The media prong, which want, desperately wants – either Harris or uh, the senator from Massachusetts, Warren. That's who the media wants, one or the other of those ladies. Mm -hmm. The folks, the Democrats, they're not real sure about this kind of radicalism. So they probably go back to the old reliable Joe Biden if he can stay awake long enough <laughs> to be inaugurated. Yeah, he, he really could. looked old last night. Towards I don't the think, end especially. Yeah, I don't I, think no, he... I like to spray tan. I, you know, I yeah. thought... I, I no, but I, you know... Trump, Trump spray tan is orange. Yeah. At least Biden's looked... T you know, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I'm watching Biden last night, and, you know, I've never thought of him... I mean, you know, when you think about him, you know he's old and everything else, but I've never felt like he was like... In arena. But in that field last night, he looked ancient, and so did Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders. Yeah, but it was late. Oof. It was late. The debate started at nine. Yeah, I know, but okay, it was I late. Think late for those two, maybe four. Well, <laughs> if, if you want to be fair, they should have an early bird debate. Yes, beginning at four. Yeah, there there could be okay. the kitties table and the early bird table. The early bird debate should be Bernie and Biden. Right, and first right, they could talk to about their the buffet, and uh, they get what they need, and they yeah. come back and chat. And then they can, you know, maybe save fifteen minutes just for their gastric problems. You know, oh my my stomach. Oh, I've got gas like you wouldn't believe. And they could just do that for 15 minutes at the early bird table. You think Bernie Sanders has never had a moment of happiness in his life? The guy is miserable, miserable. all the time, miserable. no matter what is happening. I, yeah. I, I don't know how the crotchety thing seems to work for his supporters, but I just do he not get is it. Is the so get so off. You guys have never seen Bernie. When Ben and Jerry give him a free pint, he's ecstatic. <laughs> oh, okay. He is the happiest guy. Really? Wow. Really? Yeah. So, yeah. Bill, may I ask yeah. you this question? What is the definition? You're a wordsmith. What is the definition of open borders? Very good question, Beck. Very, very good. So this is what I mean when I say that even liberal Democrats watching these debates have got to say, is it really wise public policy to allow every human being in the, United, in the world into the United States and then pick up all their health care and all their education and give them food on the table? Is that really wise public policy in a nation that has a $22 trillion debt? Okay? Now, anyone... Anyone would say, you know, I don't think that's really realistic. I, it may be virtuous. It may be, you know, that you're going to go to heaven, but it's going to bankrupt the nation. All right. It'll cause civil strife that we have never seen before. All right. And it'll collapse our economy. All of that would happen if you allowed every single human being the option of coming to the United States and having we, the American working peer person, pick up their tab. That's essentially what the Democrats, all of them, were saying. All of them. So I say, and maybe I'm wrong here, maybe when I'm uh, strolling around the Alps next week, I'll go, geez, we're in trouble. 
But I don't think most Americans are going to go for that. So all Trump has to do is keep pointing that out and say, is this what you want? All right, because it's insane. I overuse that word insane. I know I do. But this truly is madness. It's madness. Where you have no enforcement on the border, and as soon as they get here, you're picking up every tab they have. I, I mean, it's impossible, number one, but that's what they want. I know. They, the Democratic Party. And they've succeeded in turning the southern border of the United States into a chaotic mess where people are drowning in the Rio Grande River. This is the Glenn Beck program, and Bill O'Reilly is here. So if you're Donald Trump and you were watching the last two days, what would you say, or you're an advisor to Donald Trump, what would you say to the president, you need to prepare for this? Well, I don't think the president is uh, fully cognizant of how difficult his reelection is going to be, number one. Mm. I, I don't think he has come to grips with the fact that he's going to have to run a really strong campaign to win, even if the Democrats put a far left person opposite him. But assuming it's Biden and Kamala Harris, assuming that's a ticket up against uh, Trump and Pence, Trump's going to have to really run a very strong campaign because the Democrats are going to play up that he's a Satan. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's his, you know, he's just Satan. Okay? But something subtle like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. something like that. And uh, Trump's going to have to start to act more presidential in the sense that, look, I am the president. I've used my authority to help you, the American person. Here's what I've done. And look at what they want to do. See, Biden and Harris are never going to be able to get away from the open border stuff, the reparations for slavery stuff, the the unfettered abortion stuff. How can any American of faith vote for the Democratic ticket? How? I I don't understand how any Christian could do it based upon what they want to do with the unborn. And then they have the economy where the Democrats keep saying, well, the economy is no good. And then every stat in the world says, yeah, well, the, the economy is good. But they're never the Democrats are never going to say the economy is good ever. They'll f- always find somebody who's not doing well. And so that the Trump's got to got to steer away from the swamp there because he'll never get out of it if he starts to engage them on a micro level and just have a few overarch themes. I'm a successful president. I'm bringing prosperity to you, the American uh, citizen. And these people want to destroy the country. Because, as I said, the country would be destroyed with open borders. And I don't see that any Democrats saying, I'm going to moderate the border, or I don't want to. They all agree that everybody should be able to come in here. Yeah, but they're saying today, all of them said, you should, it shouldn't be criminal. Um, you shouldn't but be that's, deported. That's, you shouldn't be you arrested. It's, it's not criminal then everything goes away. Then Correct. you have no right to detain anybody. Correct. So they're, But they're saying today, no, how dare you say I'm for open borders? I'm missing something in the definition of open borders? Because I, I think you've hit all of those things. Yeah. I, I, well, look, the Democrats are going to say the economy's bad. Is that the truth? Yes. No. No, no it's true that they're going to say that. It's not right, the truth. Right, but it's not the truth. Yes. The economy's strong in America right mm-hmm. now. Democrats are going to say we're not for open borders. Is that the truth? No, it's not. So what Trump's got to do is, is just ignore that and, and just put out his uh, platform. And his platform is, here's what I've done for you, and here's what the Democrats are going to do, which is going to lead to the destruction of America as we know it. Look, Kamala Harris was the attorney general of California, right? Mm-hmm. Has anybody seen what's happened to San Francisco and Los Angeles? Mm-hmm. Anybody noticed? Mm-hmm. All right. That's performance-based. That's a performance-based thing. Was one question directed to her? Well, what about your performance as attorney general? You've got two of your, the two major cities in California in absolute chaos right now. Are you responsible for that, Ms. Harris? 
Are your policies of permissiveness responsible for 100,000 people running wild in the streets, shooting up heroin in front of children? Do you bear any responsibility for that, madam? Where was that question? Did you hear that? No. The Rachel Maddow is going to give that question. Because, I, well, you know, I thought Rachel Maddow was okay. The others, the, uh, the only two that were all right were Maddow, who didn't even say anything, and uh, Lester Holt, who's an honest guy. The rest of them, I mean, why are they there? You could give yeah. anybody, anybody could sit there and ask those kinds of questions. Um, uh, is anybody here want to confiscate guns? Raise your hand. <laughs> I got an eight-year-old who can do that. <laughs> All right? What you're supposed to do in a debate is get a person's position that doesn't quite stack and ask them about it. That's what a debate is. Not... Who likes cherry vanilla ice cream? Raise your hand. <laughs> I like it. It's, uh, it's quite delicious. More with uh, oh, okay. Sorry. More with uh, Bill O'Reilly here in in just a second. <laughs> Stand by. This is the Glenn Beck program. Mr. Bill O'Reilly is on with us. Bill, I'm going to give you my uh, winners and losers, and then I like to hear yours. Biggest loser. Uh, I think is Bernie Sanders this week only because there's no new members of the Bernie fan- Sanders fan club. His number is not going to go up. There's nobody that was not for him before that went, you know, I don't know that Bernie Sanders uh, might be good. So I think he's the biggest loser because you're not going to win if you're capped at 18 percent. The other biggest loser on the on the other side, somebody who has no uh, no ratings points uh, is uh, Beto. Beto has got to go get a real job now. I mean, he's a two time loser uh, and he and he was given the world by the Democratic Party and the media and he could do nothing with it. The biggest winner, I think, is Kamala Harris. She's now a contender, a real contender. Uh, and I think I agree with you. She's above uh, Elizabeth Warren. But Elizabeth Warren did well as well this weekend or this week. Biggest losers and winners, Bill. I, I just I don't disagree with uh, any of that. Uh, I think that's pretty smart. Um, I think Mayor Pete. Um, is articulate and he comes across as a human being. You know, I screwed up in my uh, town uh, with the police shooting. You know, a lot of politicians that don't say that. I think he hurt, he helped himself by uh, putting forth a demeanor that Americans like. They like that kind of a demeanor. Right. So he's he's going to be. Um, I wouldn't say a factor. But he he'll be in it for a while. Know, but here's yeah, here's the pro- here's the guy that helps him um, articulate, sincere. He's setting himself up for making a lot of money yeah. and then running again down the road. So let me that. let me ask you this, Bill. Two things come to mind. One, if if you can't if you can't run. Uh, what is it for? Uh, I mean, uh, South Bend, if you can't run South Bend. Uh, how can you run the United States of America? The second thing is he's going to have a real problem uh, with his Christian lecturing uh, the entire time, telling Christians that they're not Christians. That's going to be great with the media. And if he's if he's smart, he won't believe the media because that would come to haunt him in any kind of general. Yeah, I mean, I think the guy is just going through the exercise now to set himself up, as I said, um, clearly the party wants a m- woman minority on a ticket, which is why, um, I, I thought the, uh, Stacey Abrams, is that her name in uh, Georgia? Yeah. Uh, lost a gubernatorial race. Yes. I thought she might be considered, but after Harris's, um, performance, Biden's going to have to put her on a ticket because that shows that Biden is kind of a forgiving kind of guy and, He's woke now. She woke him. <laughs> All of that, you know, that, that <laughs> kind of stuff. Um, so, I, you know, I don't see a lot of drama in the Democratic uh, machine unless Biden continues to decline. And, I, you know, you got another debate at the end of uh, July. It's going to be more of the same. It's an ABC debate. Uh, you know, they're not going to. 
Stephanopoulos. Okay, so go in. He's an apparatchnik, a Democrat apparatchnik. You said uh, on your shows this week at BillOReilly.com, there are four major areas of concern for the Democratic Party, but they might not even know all of them yet. What are they? The four that the American people are going to be very hesitant to support are the economy, saying the economy is bad, because most people don't believe that. 72 percent in the latest poll think the economy is good, but these people are up there telling you it's bad. Um, The second one is the open border. I I just don't believe that even liberal Americans want that. Mm -hmm. The third one is uh, reparations for slavery, which uh, I wrote a column on, and it's unconstitutional. It was a 1969 Supreme Court ruling, 7 to 3, um, and it said that the federal government uh, cannot pay for historical injustices. Um, And the fourth one is unfettered abortion, which I said will make it very difficult for any person of faith, particularly Christian, um, to vote for these people who just say, look, you want to use abortion as birth control? You have a perfect right to do that. Because that's what they're – whenever you hear them say – Reproductive rights, women's rights. This is what Gillibrand, you know, oh, women, women, protecting women, women. And you look at them and you go, okay, um, uh, women need to be protected in America, but you have uh, another, another potential human being or human being, depending on how you see it, in play here. What do you, I mean, what are they, Kleenex? Is, is that what that is? And, and you're saying, Kirsten Gillibrand, that if you want to use abortion for birth control? You can, and it's fine with you. That's pretty harsh. So uh, those are the four, and um, if I, Trump, may, may I ask he'll, you, he'll exploit all of them. Let, let me uh, let me ask you this: You have the economy, uh, which is is denying the truth that your eyes can see and that you know. Open borders, the same thing. People see what's going on in the border, and they see it in their own community, and no one's going to want to do that. No matter what they're saying, it is denying the truth that your eyes can see. uh, Reparations um, is something that nobody is for. Abortion, again, is denying the things that your eyes can see. Health care is another one where That's a Democratic plus. Uh, the Republicans better get on it and get on it fast. Wait, 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 wait. You think the, what they're what they're positioning for of of, of universal health care and, and and shutting no, down? I'm, not, I'm no, I'm not for a single payer health care system run by the government because that takes away our freedom and the government will screw it up as they screw up everything like that. But what I will tell you is that most Americans fear being wiped out if they get an illness or their parents or children get sick. Yes, they fear that. Yes. Because the hospital costs and the drug costs are out of control in this country. Right. And they are. Right. And and so unless you have a gold plated health insurance policy, which you're paying through the nose for, and many, many Amer- working Americans cannot afford it, you're going to get hurt um, if you get sick. And the Democrats are very good at positioning that issue. And the Republicans stand silent, basically, on it. They don't have anything. That's the strongest Democratic issue. And the Republicans, mm-hmm. if they want to win and take back the House, better get something up and running, because right now they don't have anything. How about the end of the free market? That's a little theoretical, Beck. It's a little theoretical. Well, they are you, talking you, you about banter it. around the word socialist and capitalist, and I don't want to be supercilious word of the day for Stu, <laughs> okay? But most people, they don't know what you're talking about. They don't know. Because they haven't been to a socialist country. They don't know what, it, uh, what the government does. When you have a guy like Bernie Sanders basically saying, look, I'm going to take 70 percent of your income away from you. And, and nobody bats an eyelash on that. Nobody's out. No, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not, Bernie. You're not taking 70 percent of my income away from me. But that's what Bernie wants to do. Yet that's mainstream democratic politics. Mainstream. So let, let's go. Let's go and do this same exercise with the Republicans. What are the four areas of concern? You just said health care is one of them. What are the four areas of concern that the the GOP doesn't maybe isn't even aware of that are okay. their Achilles heel? Very, another very good question, Beck. You're really on your game. Today. Yeah, thank <laughs> you very much. So the Republican Party learned is from. I may I just say? Steve. May I just say? Learned from yeah. a master. 
Okay, I'm, I'm not you, Stu. Not you, but, <laughs> but I'm right. Esther. Anyway. That's what I thought. Yeah. All right, so the Republican Party is perceived by non-party people, independent people, mm-hmm. and, you know, people yeah, yeah. who don't really take an interest in politics, as being mean. Mean. They're mean guys. And white mean guys. Okay? Mm-hmm. White mean guys who want to hurt poor minority people. That's the perception that has been sold by the media. Uh The media sells that perception every hour on the hour. Never mind that most of the media are mean white guys themselves. Okay? So they've got to somehow break that down. Well, how does does the president do that? And I love this. He can't. Hang on just a sec. I love this guy. But if it is if it is Donald Trump and Mike Pence and Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, uh, they're going to only make that much, much worse. Yes, it's going to be the virtue twins, Biden and Harris against the mean white guys. Correct. Trump and Pence. So the mean white guys are basically going to stay mean white guys and tell everybody, look, if you vote for the virtuous twins, whole country is going to collapse and you're going to be sorry. But. What the Republican Party can do, if they had any kind of strategy or any kind of leadership within the party, which I don't think they have, I don't believe there's one human being in that party who's smart enough to be able to go out and market something, is to say, you know, it is humane and it is beneficial to minorities to create a strong economy so that there's opportunity for people to prosper. And we're going to take a look at these college loans stuff. And we're going to try to make it easier for people to attend school. We're not going to give it to you, but we're going to try to make it easier. We're going to absolutely try to make health care more affordable because we believe that these are issues that are important to you. What's wrong with that? Nothing. What's wrong with that? But do you ever hear that coming out of the GOP precincts? No. No. You never hear it. So the mean guys could well beat the virtue twins Based on insanity, because the Virtue Twins have, and this is important for everybody to remember, the Virtue Twins and the Democratic Party have no solutions to any problems. None. Their overarch is the government will control the lives of every American citizen. So if you're, you're, you're saying if the, you what to do. if the Republicans could frame this as insanity versus humanity... It, they would win. That's a good. I like that slogan, mm-hmm. but you've got to have a face for it. They've got to find somebody. All right, maybe Nikki Haskell. Uh, Nikki Haskell. Um, Nikki, uh, what's her name? The, the, the UN, UN ambassador, UN, South Carolina. Uh, Haley. Uh, Haley. Nikki Haley. I'm sorry, I should remember that. Um, Nikki, maybe Nikki Haley. All right, maybe somebody like that. The ambassador of goodness. Okay, that's what I would call, and it have to be a woman. The ambassador of goodness is here for uh, the Republican Party, and this is what we're going to do to try to help you because a lot of Americans need help. And, and that's where the Democrats go. They go right into those precincts of people who don't have any money, people who don't have an education, who are struggling, and they say, you know what? You vote for us. We have a magic wand. We're going to make it all better, and you're going to be living large. and da-da. Of course, that's not true, and it'll never happen, but that's what they sell. Mm-hmm. So the GOP needs an ambassador of goodness. Somebody come out and go, look, we know times are tough for many Americans, and we're, we're here to help you. But we're not going to destroy the country and make it worse. They will. So, you know, I think Marianne Williamson's going to be available. She could harness some love. Yeah, you know, pretty maybe. fast. All right. So is, uh, do you have more than that, or is that just an overall arching kind of really their biggest problem? Well, the, the Republican Party has to stop being arrogant, all right? So the Democrats should own the arrogance because they are smug. Oh, my God, are they smug. And, again, it goes back to the virtue. We are so noble. The Republican Party, you know, the Mitch McConnells and these people, I mean, they come across as like, well, you know, it's our way of the highway. And, uh, yeah, they've they got to be a little bit more receptive. That's hard for Donald Trump. It's really hard for the president. To <laughs> yes, do that. it is. That's yeah. not he's, he's one of his strong face. cards. Right. He's an in-your-face guy, which is mm-hmm. why he needs the ambassador of goodness. Mm-hmm. His daughter could do it, Ivanka. Yes. She could do it. Um, and I think that uh, he'd be smart to put her front and center out there. 
Um, she's very articulate, very attractive, very energetic, uh, and he trusts her. Trump only, only trusts four people on the planet, mm-hmm. and I name them in uh, the United States of Trump, and Ivanka is one of them. And so, but this would require, Beck, the Republicans to sit down and strategize and have conversations. Not they're never going to do that. Gonna they're happen. all out shooting, target practice. They, they're not, they don't want to have a little discussion. They're out having cocktails. Yeah, I, I think cocktails. I'm not sure Mitch McConnell is out shooting. Oh, uh, you, did, you ever hit, did you ever see him throw a knife? <laughs> guys lethal it's, it's good huh okay bill thank you so much um All happy right, independence day i'll miss you next week but we'll i'll be back you. uh and uh i'll fill you in on what's going on in europe you got it thank you so much uh-huh. bill o'reilly okay. from bill